Hello film editors. Today we're going to try some different special effects techniques and a quick tutorial on color isolation and then also uh, just reviewing a little bit of adding special effects using the Action Pack Essentials 2 software. So first I've got this clip inside of an action sequence practice um, and then what we're going to do is just take this clip and drag it down into the timeline. I've already done that and then I've cut it so that it starts with our actor here walking out, walking toward a camera on a tripod, and then shooting at the cameraman. Poor guy. All right, and so then uh, I've also clicked on it and detached the audio already, so that way I don't have a bunch of background ambient noise that I don't want. So first what we're going to do is work on the color isolation. Color isolation is something that has been done in excellent movies like Sin City, and Pleasantville was actually, I think, the, the one of the first films to do it. But basically what we're going to do is make everything around our subject black and white and turn up the contrast a little bit so we see a lot more shadowing. And then our actor, we want, since I've uh, got this blue sweater on, uh, we're going to use that as the one color that stands out. So in Sin City, for instance, uh, you would have seen people with like red ties standing out or in the movie The Spirit they definitely did that where they had a red tie that was standing out but everything else was black and white or blood will stand out from the rest of the black and white just kind of a cool way to do things we're gonna try it today with this so I'm gonna move my playhead to a spot where I can see plenty of blue as you can see here I'm also going to zoom in on it a little bit so that it's easier to see oh man he looks tick doesn't he alright then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go over here to color and I'm going to create a color mask with this button here add shape mask so I'm gonna click on that I'm gonna move the mask to uh, approximately where I want it looks like I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit approximately where I want it which is moving in like so and then what I'm going to do is click on the uh, little droplet tool I'm going to select my color. Now I don't want to select too much because then everything else is going to be taken with it. So that's good enough for our purposes today. All right. So then what I'm going to do is inside of this color mask, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go over here, click on the little arrow, and then down here it says mask inside and outside. My inside box, I'm going to click on saturation and I'm going to turn up the color just a bit so that it looks a little bit more bold and exciting and then I'm going to come down down here to where it says outside and I will click on the outside the box and then I will go to saturation and turn down the color so now you notice that only the blue is supposed to be standing out didn't quite catch all of it because of the lighting but I'm not too picky today so we'll go with that another thing I'm going to do is increase the exposure Oh, decrease the exposure, excuse me, so that the black and white stands out a little bit more boldly. And then that looks pretty good, pretty decent for today anyway. And then what we're going to do is we have to move this mask with the actor. So if we go ahead and go back to fit screen, and then if we go back to the beginning of our clip where the actor's going to exit from the box thing that's there, you notice black and white, right? It will not, uh, the actor will not appear in blue until he enters into this mask. So what we'll have to do is actually start the mask over at the other side and move it with the actor using a little thing called keyframing. So we'll move it back to a spot where the actor is in place, move the mask to approximately there, and then if we go over here to the color correction area, I'm going to set a keyframe using this little tool right here, the little plus button next to Shape Mask 1. So you click on Add a Keyframe, and then you're going to click on your playhead, and then use the arrow keys to go over a few frames. Now you notice that I'm starting to exit from the mask, so I'm going to set another keyframe, and then I will move the mask. And then I'm going to arrow over a few more times, set another keyframe, and then move the mask. So now you can go ahead and just watch as this uh, plays quickly and shows every time you move the mask you also need to make sure to set a keyframe before you do it. So set the keyframe, 
then move the mask. You'll also notice as the subject starts to get closer to the camera, you're going to need to resize the mask as well, making it bigger to encompass all of the color that you want to cover. So we'll just call it good with that and then see how it looks from here. All right, not bad for a quick and dirty color isolation. Now what I'm gonna do is going to add a little bit of slow motion effects as well. So we'll go normal speed here. And then once we get to the drawing of the piece, I'm going to have a little bit of slow motion. So I will start by choosing my blade tool. I'll find my location right here where I start to withdraw the gun. We will withdraw and boom, boom, boom. There we go, some shots fired. And then I'm gonna add slow motion right there. Okay, so now that I've chosen my clips, I'm going to use the selector tool to click on that last clip and I'm going to make it slow motion down to let's say 60% for the ending. All right, or thereabouts, 55 is good. And so it'll get nice and slow at the end for a nice little death glare. And then here, we'll do the same thing. We'll just make it slow leading up to the action. So I'll slow this down to about 70% be sufficient. Piece comes out, starts moving a little faster. All right, so that looks pretty decent. Now what we're going to do is start adding the muzzle flashes. So we'll get to the point where, uh, oh, and we need also some Foley audio. So let's start with the, let's start with the muzzle flashes, then we'll start adding audio. But we'll go first here for the muzzle flash. So I've already imported some uh, a couple of different effects from Action Pack Essentials into my library, and I've always I've already got those ready to go. So you'll want to do that before you do any of this editing. But right when the pistol comes back, right about there is where I want my muzzle flash. So when you're choosing your different effects and action pack essentials, one thing you'll need to pay attention to is the title of the clip and make sure that it says with alpha, all right? Because our action pack essentials has not been working otherwise. Like if you get a black box when you drop it into your timeline and it has text up here in the corner, it should not have text in the corner. If it says with alpha in the title uh, of, the, of the clip, then you've chosen the right one. So what I'm going to do is choose this, and I'm going to drag it down and drop it on top because when you're doing special effects, you always put the, the effect that you want to appear on top of your timeline. And then what I'm going to do is use the transform button right here. You can also choose it right here. So I'll click on transform, and then I will resize the effect to make it slightly more realistic and then drag it on top of the muzzle. So then what I'm going to do to save myself time from having to resize it over and over again from scratch, uh, dragging it down from my library, uh, what I'll do is just hit Command C, or I can do, uh, I can click on it and then go up here and do Edit, uh, Copy, but it's easier to do Command C, you know your hotkeys. So we've got one shot that happens here, the next shot will happen right, there. Okay. So then I'm going to hit Command V and that will give me the next effect. All right. So now what I'll have to do is move it and slightly resize it because I'm a little closer now. And then there goes that gunshot, and boom, another one right in the face. That's going to hurt. Going to hit Command V, and that will add it on top. Didn't that time. There we go. Command V adds it on top. And then this time we'll put it over here and resize it.
All right, that might have been a little off. Let's just see. Boom. Pretty good. We'll see when it starts going back to normal speed here. And then, oh, one right in the eyeball. That's going to not be fun for our cameraman. All right. So then we'll add another one by doing Command V. Put the muzzle flash up close and personal and make it nice and big. Right about there. Looks good. Okay, good. So now we've got all of our muzzle flash effects in there. Now what we need are gun blast effects, handgun effects. So uh, our Foley audio is over here. I've already imported that by going to the iTunes logo, selecting Final Cut Pro sound effects, going down to weapons. And then there are a few different ones. You've got bullet, handgun. You've got a shell hitting concrete. That's a good one to have too make it a little more realistic. So what we're going to do is start with the gun holster right as the piece comes out, which is right about here where we started to slow, started to speed things up again. So right there. Okay, so when I find that the gun is coming out of the holster, right about there, even though wasn't actually wearing a holster in the scene. This will give it a little bit more of that reality feel to it. So I'll move this over. Now you'll notice that the audio waves right here should be picking up right as my arm is coming out. Not bad, all right, not fantastic. It's a little too close and personal since the actor is too far away for that to happen. All right, that's a little better. Okay, and now what we're going to do is uh, add the gun loading effect. So that should come in right about right about there. So I'll add that. Make sure that the audio waves are matching up with the hand movements. Let's just take a look. Not bad. All right. And again, probably a little too loud since I'm too far away at this point. But we'll make it a little louder than the last one. Okay, and then every time we get a gun blast, we're going to hear a handgun shot and shell hitting concrete. So I'm going to drag the Foley audio of the handgun shot. Now you'll notice there's a big lag time here between when the audio clip starts and when we actually get the file. So I'm going to retime this a little bit so I don't have to keep doing it over and over again. I'll zoom in so I can see it better. Make a cut with my blade tool. Delete the slug. Let's hear it. Okay, good. So um, I will keep Keep that there, and then just a second later, just a second later after the gun shot, I want to hear a shell hitting concrete. All right, so now what I'm going to do is click on both of these by uh, clicking on handgun shot four and then holding the command key while I click on gun shell concrete. I'll hit command C. And then every time we've got the start of these muzzle flashes, hit Command-V. Make sure these are getting pasted down here. Very good. And one more Command-V, which is paste. Okay, there's all of my Foley audio. Okay, so let's see how this looks now. Start at the beginning. Ouch. All right. Hope you felt that. I certainly did. So the one thing that's missing here is when the actor is walking over the concrete, there should be some Foley audio for the footsteps. However, today we're going to ignore that because I think that is pretty good. So review the uh, color correction key over here. Go ahead and Rewind the video and take another look at that if you need to. Um, it's not that complicated once you do it once or twice. The most complicated thing is just moving the mask with your subject. But again, try it a couple times, not too shabby. All right, and then after that, 
uh, making sure that you have your special effects brought in properly and sized properly with the right timing. And then finally, adding some Foley audio to give it a little bit more realistic touch. So, thanks for watching, and go experiment.